That is definitely the frostiest I've ever seen it. Wow. Okay, so here we are. Winter is definitely upon us. Now, as you could tell from the title, we're going to be talking about how the Model 3 performance handles the winter. Now, in Canada, uh, it's famous here for having very cold, very intense winters. And admittedly, I am on the west coast of Canada, which has a more mild winter, but it will still give us all of that juicy stuff like snow and sub-zero temperatures to really see how the car handles not only range performance, but drivability, um, how it holds up and everything like that. So I'm going to break this video into three parts. We're going to start out with the beginning of the winter, see how everything transitions in and what we really need for that, how it's holding up. Then we're going to do another video right at the heart of the winter in the, the snowiest conditions, the coldest temperatures, and we'll run through some additional tests then. And we'll have a conclusion at the end when we're transitioning back to the spring. So let's get started. Now, the first thing we want to test here is the range. How much range loss are we having during the course of a given day? The best way that I could think of to test this was to do it on a bit of a longer drive. So we were heading down a couple hundred kilometers away anyways, on the weekend, so I decided to record a few segments. Now it began uh, with us at about negative four degrees in the morning for the first 100 kilometers, and then throughout the day it warmed up and we had a few different results. It's about negative five degrees out, seven degrees in the garage, but negative five out. So we have a distance of 96 kilometers to go till our next destination. We're at 390 kilometers now. So we'll see how this winter driving affects our range. Now we'll be going highway speeds, uh, at normal, normal speed that we would get the full range at. Okay, so we are about halfway here and with 51 kilometers to go to the supercharger, and this is actually the first time I've ever seen it precondition the battery for supercharging this early. We're quite far out, so this is obviously another effect of the cold temperatures outside. Now we're down to about negative one outside, and uh, yeah, we'll see where our range is at when we arrive. Okay, so we're here at our first stop. Now we've gone about 102.6 kilometers, which is a little bit more than what it originally quoted because we stopped at McDonald's for coffee on the way but we're down to 237 kilometers of range now from the three, um, 392 that we started at. So about 155 kilometers of range lost for an actual 102 traveled. So pretty interesting there to see just around freezing level what you get for range degradation. Now we are actually going to supercharge here in an IMO just because uh, it's free right now for two years and it's free energy on our trip. So I'm going to top off again and then we'll be heading down to Victoria which is about 124 more kilometers to go and I can do a bit of a secondary test to see if I'm getting similar results to the uh, first leg here. Okay we are ready now for our next leg starting at 397 kilometers we have 124 kilometers to go we're going to reset our counter to see how many kilowatt hours we've used and what our average is we're around 215 uh, uh watt hours per kilometer last time so we should be going about the same speeds and it is warming up a little bit so we might have a slight improvement but we'll see how it goes and if we can repeat the uh, same degradation we had this morning of that area and it was like oh the world's gonna end and, and look there was some bad stuff that happened <laughs> Yeah, that's my wife. What's up, Lil? Good. Good? Yeah. I say what's up, you say good. Yeah, you could say I'm good. Yeah, Canada, the only place that you could have a stoplight on the highway. Okay, now we have arrived down in Victoria, but we've taken uh, a little bit of an earlier stop in order to uh, grab some lunch, but the numbers are pretty interesting. Now, as you guys can see, it's six degrees out now. We started at negative four, so we've had uh, a large differential in temperature there from when we started this morning. So for this trip, we've actually gone 117 kilometers and averaged 169 watt hours per kilometer. So much better than we did this morning. Now our range is showing uh, 259. So that, that's much better. We've used about what 135 kilometers of range for 117 actually going. So what I think this shows is that anything below zero, you're gonna see 
the largest changes in range, but right now we were not too far off the rated range of the car. Now, as you guys can see there, what a massive difference from that first leg in the morning when we were sub uh, zero temperatures to the later leg when we were at, you know, plus four, plus five. There's a quite a large difference in the watt hours per kilometer that we were getting on the highway there. Now this will only progress as the winter gets colder, but it's good to see the initial signs and be prepared for it when you are charging. Now the next test we're gonna do goes over the usability of the car. How is it in the morning when it's all frozen and frosted over? How long does it take to get started, warmed up? Is there any problems with the battery? Uh, is there any reduction to anything that's going on within the car? We're gonna do a test where we park it outside in sub-zero temperatures and then go to it fresh in the morning uh, without any prompting to see how long it would take us to get in, get warm and get going. They are mighty frozen. That is definitely the frostiest I've ever seen it. Wow. Okay, so the car is asleep at this point. It's been uh, about negative four degrees Celsius outside all night. As you guys can see, it's pretty frosty. So what we're gonna first take a look at here is uh, how long it takes to really warm this car up in these type of conditions at the beginning of winter and see how it reacts and if there's any changes to the state of the battery after being outside here. So we'll go and open it for the first time. Hear that battery kick on. Whew. Oh yeah. Okay, as you guys can see, a nice wintry negative four degrees there. And the heat's already started to kick on to my uh, preferences there. It is chilly though, <laughs> I have to say it is quite cold. So one thing you're gonna notice here is we now have this winter leaf next to our battery, okay? And what this is telling us is that we can't quite access all of our charge in that battery until it's warmed up. So if you wanna see a bit more of the details on that, you can press the battery function there. And as we can see at this point anyways, it's not too bad at all. Right there at the end of the battery, we have set limit to full, but as you can see there, if I put this as a marker, in between the white line and the green where it begins, there's a bit of a chunk of blue. Now that is actually charged that you have, that you've charged your battery to, but you're unable to access that due to the temperature of the battery. So you already have a range limitation even at this stage of winter weather. Now, as the car warms up, this should uh, go away, but at this point, it's telling you that yes, you do have that current uh, limitation. So the next thing we wanna do is just run through the heat up procedure for the windows and for the mirrors and stuff like that and see how long it takes us to clear all this off and be ready to go. Window heat on, or that's actually our uh, side mirrors in glass, and then I will get the defrost going, which automatically goes to max. Now that was actually really easy. It only took about three minutes of putting heat on the window for it to be completely clear. And this is, this is great really. And also the mirrors were frosted over as well and those are now clear. The only thing after a few minutes here that's not cleared off is going to be the rear window. Now I can still see well enough to drive and if I really want to, I can put on the rear camera on my center display in order to bypass that entirely if it's really required for me to get going. Another thing I wanna point out is that even though it was about negative four degrees out, we were still able to get into the car even though it was cold and have the heat come on within really like almost two minutes, something like that. Within two minutes, the cabin was warm enough, at least at this point of winter, uh, for me to really feel comfortable and get going. So not bad at all. Now, one of the other interesting things that happened uh, was when I was pulling the car into the garage. I went to plug it in and I noticed that I wasn't getting too much charge rate. And then uh, I started hearing these noises. Well, you guys can take a look. Now, one other thing I wanna bring up in the garage here, okay, is that I've brought it inside and I've plugged it in. And it's only getting seven kilometers per hour. Now, 
This charger on the wall, the NEMA 1450, is capable of charging at about 47 to 49 kilometers per hour. Um, so not too bad at all. Now the reason why we're only getting six kilometers per hour, seven kilometers an hour, is that the battery is really cold from being outside all night and that's going to limit its ability to take a charge in general. So what the car is gonna do now, and you can hear it running, there's stators that actually heat up the battery inside it that only run in certain conditions. Generally, they use uh, the car's actual heat from the motors to warm up the battery. But in this case, because it knows it's about to take a charge, it's actually going to heat up the battery directly to the point that it's ready to take that charge. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there is a distinct sound to those stator heaters inside the battery units actually function. It sounds like almost like a high-pitched hum, and that is not a normal noise that you would hear on the car, and this is, again, a first time for me hearing this. Now, we'll come back in a few minutes and see how long it takes for those stators to really get going and to heat up the battery to the point that it's ready to take a solid charge. I also know some of you are gonna notice on here that even though we have this low, low rate of charge, we also have been shown that we've gained three kilometers, and you're probably wondering how that is. The reason for this is pretty simple. The stators inside the batteries will actually heat up that unit. So remember that little bit of blue that we had, those kilometers that were temporarily lost? By heating up the battery, those kilometers are instantly regained so that we have those back right away. And that's how you get that fast rate of charging, even though the car is showing right now at five kilometers per hour. Now you're really gonna hear those heaters going now. Again, these are sounds I have never heard the car make. And I also just got one of those little pops in the battery pan, which is just the flexing of the metal in there as it heats up. So the last thing we're gonna do is talk about the condition of the car. How is it holding up to the elements? What things are changing and what uh, measures am I having to take to keep the car in good shape? Now, the first thing we're gonna talk about is cleaning. Now, you guys who have watched this channel know I like to keep this car meticulously clean. The rims so far, the winter rims we got from T-Sport line, they're holding up really well. There's no scratches or nicks on those so far and the tires as well. Of course, they're very, very dirty. As you can see, is the rest of the car. No matter what I do every day, I come home with a whole bunch of uh, stuff on it and it's very hard to keep up with. So overall now, I've given up on my uh, weekend polishes and what I'm really doing is just giving it a spray off about every week or so to keep all the salt off it. Another thing to notice here is the interior. Now the interior of the car is holding up really well. I have not had to put in any uh, anything like special mats or anything like that yet. Just a vacuum uh, has been enough so far. But come later in the winter when the snow really hits, I bet this will change. One last thing to note guys is that I have found a lot of stuff getting on the car's cameras, especially those side marker cameras that are on the front fender. So you wanna make sure to check those each day before you're driving to see if there's any salt buildup or anything that's blocking those off because it will affect the safety systems of your car and make them work less efficiently than they possibly could. It just takes a few minutes with a microfiber cloth and you will have those all cleaned off. Okay, so where does that leave us? Now the car does have reduced range uh, below zero degrees, and this is to be expected. But when you do put in a destination, it does take all of this into account. So the car was actually approximating that I would have about uh, 50 kilometers of loss on that 200 kilometer trip when I actually put it in there. So it's not like it's ignoring and having some fantasy hope about the range it will get. The car knows and does adapt in its prediction. So that is good. You just have to be a bit more prepared with your charging state when you leave for a longer journey. As far as uh, the winter test goes for going outside and getting it rolling, it is really fast and easy to get this car on the road at this point in the winter. Of course, this can change and we will see how it goes in part two. And cleanliness, you just wanna make sure to give the car a rinse uh, so that everything is kind of kept up to shape. And one other thing that I want to mention is I saw at a supercharger, there's a Model 3 Performance that had its uh, original summer tires on there and it was negative temperatures. Do not do this. Two reasons. Uh, it's unsafe. They do not have good cold weather traction. And two, it will shred those tires. The compound's not designed for it and they will not last. And they are very expensive. So pony up and get yourself some winter tires if you're going to have this car. 
Well guys, that's it. That's all for this one. If this video helped you uh, in your Tesla research, I got one of those referral links for us both to get free supercharger kilometers uh, in the description below. If not, it really, really helps out in our YouTube rankings if you like and subscribe. So if you can do that, it's uh, very appreciated. Have a good night.